So we are going to be continuing our v4 updates and i'm going to be focusing on the integration of css or addition of css whatever you want to call it and seems like it has gotten a little bit of a glow up and i have tested it and i kind of like it and i want to show you a practical example what i mean by that of course they Still need to work on it, but this is just early stages. Be receptive to these changes, be patient and give your feedback. If you have any and whatever feedback in the comments below would be very helpful to the team and to me as well, because we're all learning here all together. Yeah, especially if you're a web developer, uh, a little bit more seasoned. And if you have opinions, please voice them. So let's get into it. All right. So this new update is part of Elementor v333 beta release. I will leave a link to their GitHub repository to check it out. And uh, you can read a little bit more here. So if you scroll down, you will see the details, highlights on the CSS uh control as it says here in before okay i'm not gonna go fully on to into this because there's no point it's mostly show don't tell yeah you can read yourself more details here uh so let's jump right in into my example all right first of all before anything make sure that you go and update your elementor and elementor pro both have to have the same version 333 and as you can see i have the beta version for both so how you activate beta version because that's what you need in order to see the css option go to tools elemental tools yes and go to version control and make sure that you enable the beta tester option here yeah you see i have it enabled and save your changes as easy as that so then if you still don't see that the css options go to general clear the files and data sync library and save changes i hope it works for you and i'm gonna go to page that i have already started working on v4 examples and i will leave a link in the description for the video that i have published this week and this is what we did okay this is pretty cool and i've had someone ask what about the basically the motion effects they're not available yet i i'm really hoping that they are going to come up with something really cool i really hope that i wish <laughs> my wish is for gsap some gsap integrations but it's not as easy as we would like to imagine so let's see what the team comes up with so in the meantime let's test our css okay what i'm gonna do and i will show you how cool this is i'm going to add a heading here and actually i will duplicate this uh, heading let me just bring in the structure duplicate yeah so we have basically two h2s on the page yeah normally with the v3 version if you go to style and go to add your css as you would normally your h2 your all your h2s on the page would change yeah so in this case we can actually add focused css what i mean by that is if i want this heading the first one to be red and the other one to be blurry we can do that individually we don't have to add any other extra classes or anything like that so let me just also add a heading from v3 and another heading from v3 yeah let me just duplicate this and uh, let me actually triplicate this and I will save V3 here and duplicate this one and save V4 here. So we know uh, what we are working with and uh, there's no confusion. V4 items, V3 items. Okay. So I'm going to go and change the color of this heading uh, with whatever color we find okay so basically the css is in the same place you would normally have it in v3 just going to select my heading and i'm gonna go to style and if you look at this new custom css box it has some additional predefined code i would say whatever you call it and it's element that style and the curly brackets and this is something like selector i think it's a wrapper or something like that correct me if i'm wrong so 
what to do you don't have to add your html tag for example h2 curly brackets color let's say salmon yeah you don't have to do that because it's not going to work what you have to do though is basically just add your property and your value and that's it simple right let's do something else i'm gonna say also uh font size for example yeah so i'm gonna make it 5 rem and it's a big text and then if we want to change this one let's go to style let's go to css let's say color call it blue yeah and font size let's go with 10 rem yeah and then let's go in the version 3 and let's drop some code in here. I already have some code. So you will see how different this is. Okay. First of all, if you don't add a selector and you have H2s on the page, either V4 or V3, they will all change the same uh, to the same color. Yeah, because I have added this part here in Porter. So if I remove this, nothing will be shown. So I'm going to just delete it. That is one of the things that you have to keep in mind, okay? If you add important, everything will change on the page regardless of what element is from what version. So if we add a selector here, yeah, the, the text, the word selector in the heading widget that we are wanting to, you know, change, it's going to change only that. But if I take it and bring it up in the parent container, basically, and drop it in here is going to affect everything. All right, this was the first view. Um, this all right, this was the first look at CSS in V4. And if you have any recommendations for the team on what they can improve, if you have tested it yourself, give your opinion. Be honest, but be respectful. And uh, let's have a constructive discussion in the comments below. I will keep testing this as they make improvements. Yeah, let me know in the comments below if and what you would like to see more about the V4. If you'd like to see what else you can build with Elementor, what display is here or here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video. And I'll see you next time.